Malayalam, 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 Malayalam. Maljaram is a Dravidian language spoken in the Indian state of Kerala and the Union territories of Lakshadweep and Puducherry by the Malayali people, and it is one of 22 scheduled languages of India. Malayalam has official language status in the state of Kerala and in the Union territories of Lakshadweep and Puducherry and is spoken by 37 million people worldwide. Malayalam is also spoken by linguistic minorities in the neighboring states, with significant number of speakers in the Nilgiris, Kanyakumari, and Coimbatore districts of Tamil Nadu, and Kadagu and Dakshina Kannada districts of Karnataka. Due to Malayali expatriates in the Persian Gulf, the language is also widely spoken in Gulf countries. The origin of Malayalam remains a matter of dispute among scholars. One view holds that Malayalam and modern Tamil are offshoots of Middle Tamil and separated from it sometime after the c. 7th century AD. A second view argues for the development of the two languages out of Proto-Dravidian or Proto-Tamil Malayalam in the prehistoric era. Designated a classical language in India. In 2013, it developed into the current form mainly by the influence of the poet Thunchadhu Eshuthakan in the 16th century. The oldest documents written purely in Malayalam and still surviving are the Varapali copper plates from 832 AD and Tharasapali copper plates from 849 AD. The earliest script used to write Malayalam was the Vatilutu alphabet, and later the Kaleshutu, which derived from it. The current Malayalam script is based on the Vatilutu script, which was extended with Grantha script letters to adopt Indo-Aryan loanwords. The oldest literary work in Malayalam, distinct from the Tamil tradition, is dated from between the 9th and 11th centuries. The first travelogue in any Indian language is the Malayalam Vathamanapusthakam, written by Paremakal Thoma Kathana in 1785. Topic Etymology The word Malayalam originated from the words mala, meaning mountain, and alam, meaning region, or ship, as in township. Malayalam thus translates directly as the mountain region. The term originally referred to the land of the Chera dynasty, and only later became the name of its language. The language Malayalam is alternatively called Alialam, Malayalani, Malayali, Malayan, Malayad, and Malayal. The earliest extant literary works in the regional language of present day Kerala probably date back to as early as the 12th century. However, the named identity of this language appears to have come into existence only around the 16th century, when it was known as Malayama or Malayanmar. The words were also used to refer to the script and the region. The word, Malayalam, was coined in the later period, and the local people referred to their language as both, Tamil, and Malayalam, until the colonial period. <laughs> <laughs> Evolution The generally held view is that Malayalam was the western coastal dialect of Tamil and separated from Tamil sometime between the 9th and 13th centuries. Some scholars however believe that both Tamil and Malayalam developed during the prehistoric period from a common ancestor, Proto-Tamil Dravidian, and that the notion of Malayalam being a «daughter» of Tamil is misplaced. This is based on the fact that Malayalam and several Dravidian languages on the western coast have common features which are not found even in the oldest historical forms of Tamil. Robert Caldwell, in his 1856 book, A Comparative Grammar of the Dravidian or South Indian Family of Languages, opined that Malayalam branched from classical Tamil and over time gained a large amount of Sanskrit vocabulary and lost the personal terminations of verbs. As the language of scholarship and administration, Old Tamil, which was written in Tamil Brahmi and the Vatilutu alphabet later, greatly influenced the early development of Malayalam. The Malayalam script began to diverge from the Tamil Brahmi script in the 8th and 9th centuries. 
and by the end of the 13th century a written form of the language emerged which was unique from the Tamil Brahmi script that was used to write Tamil. Malayalam is similar to some Sri Lankan Tamil dialects, and the two are often mistaken by native Indian Tamil speakers. Malayalam Tamil The Portuguese called both Malayalam and Tamil as the Malabar language. The first books to be printed in local languages were in the 1550s, which used Portuguese Latin characters. Ravakuti Pillar Poor, written in the 17th century, is the shining example of Malayanmar literature. Ananthapuri Varnanam, written in the 1800s, was among the last of these Malayalam Tamil books. Itia Chudan, the famed Ayurvedic physician, used Malayanmar and Kaleshutu to write Hortus Malabaricus in 1678, which was translated into Latin. In the 17th century, the Malayanmar script was extensively used by the Catholics of Kerala. Samshepa Vedatham, in Malayanmar, was printed in Rome in 1772. The Ramban Bible, written in Malayanmar, was translated from Syriac by Father Philippos and published in 1811. After this period, the British banned Malayanmar and most of the books written in Malayanmar disappeared. The British never supported or translated Malayanmar books into Grantha Malayalam, which they chose to promote in the 19th century. Aravakuti Pillar Poor, Vardakan Patu, Thacholi Patu, Kanasa Ramayanam, Ramakaritham Ananthapuri Varnanam are a few of the Malayanmar books which have survived. Malayanmar, the indigenous Dravidian tongue, and its great literary tradition were lost in history. <laughs> <laughs> Role of missionaries Johann Ernst Hanxelden was a German missionary who was the first ever European to write the grammar book for Grantha Malayalam called Grantha Basayuide Vyakaranam in the 1700s. The discovery that Sanskrit was related to German made the German missionaries promote Sanskrit and Grantha Malayalam at the expense of Malayalam Tamil. In 1819, Benjamin Bailey missionary created the first Malayalam, Grantha Malayalam types. Bailey published the first Malayalam, Grantha Malayalam Bible in Tigalari script, with the help of Chandu Menon from Otapalam, who had converted to Christianity and bore the name Joseph Fenn, and Jakob Ramavarman in CMS Kottayam. In that era Christians were using the Malayalam Tamil language, hence they did not participate in the printing of the first Malayalam Bible. The British promoted Grantha Malayalam under the name New Malayanmar. In 1848, Herman Gundit published the first ever Malayalam newspaper called Rajasamacharam from Thalassery. German and Dutch missionaries played a major role in the promotion of Grantha Malayalam in Kerala, leading to its adoption by Christians by the mid-19th century. Dialects <inaudible> 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 Variations in intonation patterns, vocabulary, and distribution of grammatical and phonological elements are observable along the parameters of region, religion, community, occupation, social stratum, style and register. Dialects of Malayalam are distinguishable at regional and social levels, including occupational and also communal differences. The salient features of many varieties of tribal speech e.g., the speech of Muthavans, Malayarayas, Malayaladas, Kanikas, Kardars, Palayars, Kuramas, and Vedas and those of the various dialects Nambuthiras, Nairs, Ezavas, Syrian Christians Nasrani, Muslims, fishermen and many of the occupational terms common to different sections of Malayalese have been identified. According to the Dravidian Encyclopedia, the regional dialects of Malayalam can be divided into 13 dialect areas. They are as follows. According to Ethnologue, the dialects are, Malabar, Nagari Malayalam, South Kerala, Central Kerala, North Kerala, Kayava, Nambudiri, Nair, Mopla, Mapila, Pulaya, Nasrani, and Kasargod. The community dialects are, Nambudiri, Nair, Mopla, Mapila, Pulaya, and Nasrani. 
Whereas both the Nambuthiri and Nair dialects have a common nature, the Mapilla dialect is among the most divergent of dialects, differing considerably from literary Malayalam. As regards the geographical dialects of Malayalam, surveys conducted so far by the Department of Linguistics, University of Kerala restricted the focus of attention during a given study on one specific caste so as to avoid mixing up of more than one variable such as communal and geographical factors. Thus for examples, the survey of the Ezava dialect of Malayalam, results of which have been published by the department in 1974, has brought to light the existence of 12 major dialect areas for Malayalam, although the isoglosses are found to crisscross in many instances. Sub-dialect regions, which could be marked off, were found to be 30. This number is reported to tally approximately with the number of principalities that existed during the pre-British period in Kerala. In a few instances at least, as in the case of Venad, Karapuram, Nilaswaram and Kambala, the known boundaries of old principalities are found to coincide with those of certain dialects or sub-dialects that retain their individuality even today. This seems to reveal the significance of political divisions in Kerala in bringing about dialect difference. Divergence among dialects of Malayalam embrace almost all aspects of language such as phonetics, phonology, grammar and vocabulary. Differences between any two given dialects can be quantified in terms of the presence or absence of specific units at each level of the language. To cite a single example of language variation along the geographical parameter, it may be noted that there are as many as 77 different expressions employed by the Ezavas and spread over various geographical points just to refer to a single item, namely, the flower bunch of coconut. Kola is the expression attested in most of the panchayats in the Palakkada, Ernakulam and Tiruvananthapuram districts of Kerala, whereas Kolakal occurs most predominantly in Kanur and Kochi and Kanal in Alapura and Kolam. Kozinal and Kalanilu are the forms most common in Trishur Aduki and Kottayam respectively. In addition to these forms most widely spread among the areas specified above, there are dozens of other forms such as Kotumpu Kolam and Tiruvananthapuram, Katapur Kottayam, Krali Pathanamthitta, Patachi, Nanal Kolam, Poshata Palakada, etc. referring to the same item. It may be noted at this point that labels such as Brahman dialect and Syrian caste dialect refer to overall patterns constituted by the sub-dialects spoken by the subcastes or subgroups of each such caste. The most outstanding features of the major communal dialects of Malayalam are summarized below. Lexical items with phonological features reminiscent of Sanskrit e.g., vidi, meaning fool, bosku, lie, musku, impudence, dustu, impurity, and Ebian and Sumban, both meaning good for nothing fellow, abound in this dialect. The dialect of the educated stratum among the Nairs resembles the Brahmin dialect in many respects. The amount of Sanskrit influence, however, is found to be steadily decreasing as one descends along the parameter of education. One of the striking features differentiating the Nair dialect from the Ezava dialect is the phonetic quality of the word final, an enunciative vowel unusually transcribed as u. In the Nair dialect it is a mid-central unrounded vowel whereas in the Ezava dialect it is often heard as a lower high back unrounded vowel. The Syrian Christian dialect of Malayalam is quite close to the Nair dialect, especially in phonology. The speech of the educated section among Syrian Christians and that of those who are close to the church are peculiar in having a number of assimilated as well as unassimilated loan words from English and Syriac. The few loan words which have found their way into the Christian dialect are assimilated in many cases through the process of diaspiration. The Muslim dialect shows maximum divergence from the literary standard dialect of Malayalam. It is very much influenced by Arabic and Urdu rather than by Sanskrit or by English. The retroflex continuant ZHA of the literary dialect is realized in the Muslim dialect as the palatal ya. Tamil spoken in the Kanyakumari district has many Malayalam words. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> External influences and loanwords. Malayalam has incorporated many elements from other languages over the years, the most notable of these being Sanskrit and later, English. According to Suranad Kunjan Pillai who compiled the authoritative Malayalam lexicon, the other principal languages whose vocabulary was incorporated over the ages were Pali, Prakrit, Urdu, Hindi, Chinese, Arabic, Syriac, Dutch, and Portuguese. Many medieval liturgical texts were written in an admixture of Sanskrit and early Malayalam, called Manipravalam. The influence of Sanskrit was very prominent in formal Malayalam used in literature. Malayalam has a substantially high amount of Sanskrit loanwords but these are seldom used. Loanwords and influences also from Hebrew, Syriac, and Ladino abound in the Jewish Malayalam dialects, as well as English, Portuguese, Syriac, and Greek in the Christian dialects, while Arabic and Persian elements predominate in the Muslim dialects. The Muslim dialect known as Mapilla Malayalam is used in the Malabar region of Kerala. Another Muslim dialect called Bari Bashi is used in the extreme northern part of Kerala and the southern part of Karnataka. For a comprehensive list of loan words, see Loan Words in Malayalam. Geographic distribution and population Malayalam is a language spoken by the native people of southwestern India from Talapadi to Kanyakumari. According to the Indian census of 2011, there were 32,299,239 speakers of Malayalam in Kerala, making up 93.2% of the total number of Malayalam speakers in India, and 96.74% of the total population of the state. There were a further 701,673 2.1% 2 of the total number in Karnataka, 957,705 2.7% in Tamil Nadu, and 406,358 1.2% in Maharashtra. The number of Malayalam speakers in Lakshadweep is 51,100, which is only 0.15% of the total number, but is as much as about 84% of the population of Lakshadweep. In all, Malayalis made up 3.22% of the total Indian population in 2011. Of the total 34,713,130 Malayalam speakers in India in 2011, 33,015,420 spoke the standard dialects, 19,643 spoke the Yerava dialect and 31,329 spoke non-standard regional variations like Erinadan. As per the 1991 census data, 28.85% of all Malayalam speakers in India spoke a second language and 19.64% of the total knew three or more languages. Large numbers of Malayalis have settled in Chennai, Madras, Bangalore, Mangalore, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Bombay, Navi Mumbai, Pune, Mysore and Delhi. A large number of Malayalis have also emigrated to the Middle East, the United States, and Europe. There were 179,860 speakers of Malayalam in the United States, according to the 2000 census, with the highest concentrations in Bergen County, New Jersey and Rockland County, New York. There are 172,000 of Malayalam speakers in Malaysia. There were 7,093 Malayalam speakers in Australia in 2006. The 2001 Canadian census reported 7,070 people who listed Malayalam as their mother tongue, mainly in Toronto. The 2006 New Zealand census reported 2,139 speakers. 134 Malayalam speaking households were reported in 1956 in Fiji. There is also a considerable Malayali population in the Persian Gulf regions, especially in Dubai and Doha. Topic: Phonology. 
For the consonants and vowels, the International Phonetic Alphabet IPA symbol is given, followed by the Malayalam character and the ISO 15919 transliteration. Topic: <laughs> Vowels. Asterisk, is the Samva Tokaram, an apenthentic vowel in Malayalam. Therefore, it has no independent vowel letter because it never occurs at the beginning of words but, when it comes after a consonant, there are various ways of representing it. In medieval times, it was just represented with the symbol for u, but later on it was just completely omitted that is, written as an inherent vowel. In modern times, it is written in two different ways, the northern style, in which a chandrakala is used, and the southern or travancore style, in which the diacritic for a, u, is attached to the preceding consonant and a chandrakala is written above. Asterisk, a, phonetically central, a, and, are both represented as basic or default vowels in the Abugida script, although, Never occurs word initially and therefore does not make use of the letter A, but they are distinct vowels. Malayalam has also borrowed the Sanskrit diphthongs of O, represented in Malayalam as O, O, and I, represented in Malayalam as I, I, although these mostly occur only in Sanskrit loanwords. Traditionally, as in Sanskrit, four vocalic consonants, usually pronounced in Malayalam as consonants followed by the samba tokaram, which is not officially a vowel, and not as actual vocalic consonants, have been classified as vowels. Vocalic r, 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 long vocalic r, 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 vocalic l, 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 and long vocalic l, 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 l. Except for the first, the other three have been omitted from the current script used in Kerala as there are no words in current Malayalam that use them. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Consonants. The unaspirated alveolar plosive stop once had a separate character but it has become obsolete, as the sound only occurs in geminate form when geminated it is written with a ra below another ra or immediately following other consonants in these cases, ra or rara are usually written in small size underneath the first consonant. The archaic letter can be found in the row here three. The alveolar nasal also had a separate character that is now obsolete it can be seen in the row here four, and the sound is now almost always represented by the symbol that was originally used only for the dental nasal. However, both sounds are extensively used in current colloquial and official Malayalam, and although they were allophones in old Malayalam, they now occasionally contrast in gemination, for example, enel, by me. First person singular pronoun in the instrumental case an enel, if that is so, elided from the original entel, which are both written enel. The letter fa represents both p, a phoneme occurring in Sanskrit loanwords, and f, which is mostly found in comparatively recent borrowings from European languages. The voiceless unaspirated plosives, the voiced unaspirated plosives, the nasals and the laterals can be geminated. The retroflex lateral is clearly retroflex, but may be more of a flap. Equals than an approximant. The approximant has both rhotic and lateral qualities, and is indeterminate between an approximant and a fricative, but is laminal post alveolar rather than a true retroflex. The articulation changes part way through, perhaps explaining why it behaves as both a rhotic and a lateral, both an approximant and a fricative, but the nature of the change is not understood. Equals. Topic: Number system and other symbols. Equals. Malayalam numbers and fractions are written as follows. These are archaic and no longer commonly used. Note that there is a confusion about the glyph of Malayalam digit zero. The correct form is oval-shaped, but occasionally the glyph for one quarter is erroneously shown as the glyph for zero. Equals. <laughs> Topic: <laughs> Grammar. Equals. 
Malayalam has a canonical word order of SOV subject -object -verb, as do other Dravidian languages. A rare OSV word order occurs in interrogative clauses when the interrogative word is the subject. Both adjectives and possessive adjectives precede the nouns they modify. Malayalam has six or seven grammatical cases. Verbs are conjugated for tense, mood and aspect, but not for person, gender nor number except in archaic or poetic language. Nouns <laughs> 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 The declensional paradigms for some common nouns and pronouns are given below. As Malayalam is an agglutinative language, it is difficult to delineate the cases strictly and determine how many there are, although seven or eight is the generally accepted number. Alveolar plosives and nasals although the modern Malayalam script does not distinguish the latter from the dental nasal are underlined for clarity, following the convention of the National Library at Kolkata Romanization. Equals. Topic: Personal pronouns. Equals. Vocative forms are given in parentheses after the nominative, as the only pronominal vocatives that are used are the third-person ones, which only occur in compounds. Equals. Topic. Other nouns equals The following are examples of some of the most common declension patterns. Equals Topic Words adopted from Sanskrit. Equals when words are adopted from Sanskrit, their endings are usually changed to conform to Malayalam norms. Equals. Topic nouns. Topic masculine Sanskrit nouns with a word stem ending in a short a. Take the ending an in the nominative singular. For example, kasna kasnan. The final n is dropped before masculine surnames, honorifics, or titles ending in an and beginning with a consonant other than n, e.g., Krishna Menon, Krishna Kaniyan, etc., but Krishna Nezhutthakan surnames ending with a or al, where these are plural forms of an. Denoting respect are treated similarly. Krishna Pothavel, Krishna Chakya, but Krishna Nair, Krishna Nambir, as a Sanskrit surname such Varma N, Sharma N, or Gupta N, rare, e.g. Krishna Varma, Krishna Shaman. If a name is a compound, only the last element undergoes this transformation, e.g., Krsna plus Deva. Krsnadevan, not Krsnandevan. Feminine words ending in a long a or i are changed to end in a short a or i, for example, Sita. Sita and Laxmi, Laxmi. However, the long vowel still appears in compound words, such as Sitadevi or Laxmidevi. The long I is generally reserved for the vocative forms of these names, although in Sanskrit the vocative actually takes a short I. There are also a small number of nominative I endings that have not been shortened, a prominent example being the word stri for woman. Nouns that have a stem in, an, and which end with a long, a, uh, in the masculine nominative singular have, vu, added to them, for example, brahma, stem, brahman, brahmavu, 
When the same nouns are declined in the neuter and take a short a ending in Sanskrit, Malayalam adds an additional pamita, e.g., Brahma. Neuter nominative singular of Brahman becomes Brahman. This is again omitted when forming compounds. Words whose roots end in, an, but whose nominative singular ending is, a, for example, the Sanskrit root of, karma, is actually, karman, are also changed. The original root is ignored and, karma, the form in Malayalam being, karmam, because it ends in a short, a, is taken as the basic form of the noun when declining. However, this does not apply to all consonant stems, as, unchangeable stems such as manus mind and sir t friend are identical to the malayalam nominative singular forms although the regularly derived manum sometimes occurs as an alternative to manus sanskrit words describing things or animals rather than people with a stem in short a end with an pamita in malayalam for example, Ramayana, Ramayanam. In most cases, this is actually the same as the Sanskrit accusative case ending, which is also Pamita, or, allophonically, Anusvara due to the requirements of the Sandhi word combining rules in the neuter nominative. However, things and animals and people are not always differentiated based on whether or not they are sentient beings, for example, Nursimha becomes Nursimham and not Nursimhan, whereas Ananta becomes Anantan, even though both are sentient. This does not strictly correspond to the Sanskrit neuter gender, as both Nursimha and Ananta are masculine nouns in the original Sanskrit. Nouns with short vowel stems other than a, such as Vishnu, Prajapati, etc. are declined with the Sanskrit stem acting as the Malayalam nominative singular the Sanskrit nominative singular is formed by adding a visaga, e.g., as in, Visna. The original Sanskrit vocative is often used in formal or poetic Malayalam, e.g., Hare, for, Hari, or, Prabho, for, Prabhu, Lord. This is restricted to certain contexts, mainly when addressing deities or other exalted individuals, so a normal man named Hari would usually be addressed using a Malayalam vocative such as Hari. The Sanskrit genitive is also occasionally found in Malayalam poetry, especially the personal pronouns Mama, My, or Mine, and Tavar, Thy, or Thine. Other cases are less common and generally restricted to the realm of Manipravalam. Along with these Tatsama borrowings, there are also many Tadbhava words in common use. These were incorporated via borrowing before the separation of Malayalam and Tamil. As the language did not then accommodate Sanskrit phonology as it now does, words were changed to conform to the old Tamil phonological system, for example, Kasna, Kanan. Most of his works are oriented on the basic Malayalam family and cultures and many of them were path-breaking in the history of Malayalam literature. <laughs> <laughs> Writing system Historically, several scripts were used to write Malayalam. Among these were the Vatilatu, Kalejuthu and Malayanmar scripts. But it was the Grantha script, another southern Brahmi variation, which gave rise to the modern Malayalam script. It is syllabic in the sense that the sequence of graphic elements means that syllables have to be read as units, though in this system the elements representing individual vowels and consonants are for the most part readily identifiable. In the 1960s Malayalam dispensed with many special letters representing less frequent conjunct consonants and combinations of the vowel, u, with different consonants. Malayalam script consists of a total of 578 characters. 
The script contains 52 letters including 16 vowels and 36 consonants, which forms 576 syllabic characters, and contains two additional diacritic characters named Anusvara and Visaga. The earlier style of writing has been superseded by a new style as of 1981. This new script reduces the different letters for typesetting from 900 to fewer than 90. This was mainly done to include Malayalam in the keyboards of typewriters and computers. In 1999 a group named Raychana Akshara Vedi produced a set of free fonts containing the entire character repertoire of more than 900 glyphs. This was announced and released along with a text editor in the same year at Tiruvananthapuram, the capital of Kerala. In 2004, the fonts were released under the new GPL license by Richard Stallman of the Free Software Foundation at the Kochi University of Science and Technology in Kochi, Kerala. Malayalam has been written in other scripts like Roman, Syriac and Arabic. Suriani Malayalam was used by St. Thomas Christians also known as Nasranis until the 19th century. Arabic scripts particularly were taught in madrasas in Kerala and the Lakshadweep Islands. <laughs> <laughs> Literature The earliest Malayalam inscription discovered until now is the Edakal 5 inscription ca. late 4th century, early 5th century. The early literature of Malayalam comprised three types of composition Malayalam Nada, Tamil Nada and Sanskrit Nada. Classical songs known as Nadan Patu Manipravalam of the Sanskrit tradition, which permitted a generous interspersing of Sanskrit with Malayalam. Niranam poets Manipravalam Madhava Panikar, Sankara Panikar and Rama Panikar wrote Manipravalam poetry in the 14th century. The folk song rich in native elements Malayalam poetry to the late 20th century betrays varying degrees of the fusion of the three different strands. The oldest examples of Patu and Manipravalam, respectively, are Ramacharitam and Vaishikatantram, both from the 12th century. The earliest extant prose work in the language is a commentary in simple Malayalam, Bashakotalyam, 12th century, on Chanakya's Arthashastra. Ajatmaramayanam by Thunchadhu Ramanujan Eshuthakan known as the father of the Malayalam language, who was born in Tiruur, one of the most important works in Malayalam literature. Unnunili Sandesam written in the 14th century is amongst the oldest literary works in Malayalam language. By the end of the 18th century, some of the Christian missionaries from Kerala started writing in Malayalam but mostly travelogues, dictionaries, and religious books. Vathamanapusthakam, written by Paremakal Thoma Kathana, is considered to be the first travelogue in an Indian language. Early period The earliest known poem in Malayalam, Ramacharitam, dated to the 12th to 14th century, was completed before the introduction of the Sanskrit alphabet. It shows the same phase of the language as in Jewish and Nasrani Sasanas dated to mid-8th century. But the period of the earliest available literary document cannot be the sole criterion used to determine the antiquity of a language. In its early literature, Malayalam has songs, patu, for various subjects and occasions, such as harvesting, love songs, heroes, gods, etc. A form of writing called kampu emerged from the 14th century onwards. It mixed poetry with prose and used a vocabulary strongly influenced by Sanskrit, with themes from epics and Puranas. Rama Charitam, which was composed in the 14th century AD, may be said to have inaugurated Malayalam literature just as Nanaya's Mahabharatam did for Telugu. The fact is that dialectical and local peculiarities had already developed and stamped themselves in local songs and ballads. But these linguistic variations were at last gathered together and made to give a coloring to a sustained literary work, the Rama Charitam, thereby giving the new language a justification and a new lease on life. 
The Malayalam language, with the introduction of a new type of devotional literature, underwent a metamorphosis, both in form and content, and it is generally held that modernity in Malayalam language and literature commenced at this period. This change was brought about by Thunchathu Ezhuthakan 16th century, who is known as the father of modern Malayalam. Till this time Malayalam indicated two different courses of development depending on its relationship with either Sanskrit or Tamil. The earliest literary work in Malayalam now available is a prose commentary on Chanakya's Arthashastra, ascribed to the 13th century. The poetical works called Vaishikatantram are also believed to belong to the early 14th century. These works come under a special category known as Manipravalam, literally the combination of two languages, the language of Kerala and Sanskrit. A grammar and rhetoric in this hybrid style was written sometime in the 14th century in Sanskrit and the work, called the Lilatikalam, is the main source of information for a student of literary and linguistic history. According to this book, the Manipravalam and Patu styles of literary compositions were in vogue during this period. Patu means song and more or less represents the pure Malayalam school of poetry. From the definition of the Patu style given in the Lilatikalam, it can be surmised that the language of Kerala during this period was more or less in line with Tamil, but this has misled many people to believe incorrectly that Malayalam was itself Tamil during this period and before. The latest research shows that Malayalam as a separate spoken language in Kerala began showing independent lines of development from its parental tongue Proto-Tamil Malayalam which is not modern Tamil, preserving the features of the earliest Dravidian tongue, which only in due course gave birth to the literary form of Tamil, namely Sen Tamil and Malayalam, the spoken form of which is prevalent in Kerala. However, till the 13th century there is no hard evidence to show that the language of Kerala had a literary tradition except in folk songs. The literary tradition consisted of three early Manipravalam champas, a few Sandisa kavyas and innumerable amorous compositions on the courtesans of Kerala, which throb with literary beauty and poetical fancies, combined with a relishing touch of realism about them with regard to the then social conditions. Many prose works in the form of commentaries upon Puranic episodes form the bulk of the classical works in Malayalam. The Patu, a sutra devoted to define this pattern is termed a Patu. School also has major works like the Ramachritam, 12th century, and the Bhagavad Gita, 14th century, by a set of poets belonging to one family called the Kanasas. Some of them like Ramachritam have a close resemblance to the Tamil language during this period. This is to be attributed to the influence of Tamil works on native poets belonging to areas that lie close to the Tamil country. It was during the 16th and 17th centuries that later Champu Kavyas were written. Their specialty was that they contained both Sanskritic and indigenous elements of poetry to an equal degree, and in that manner were unique. Unnai Variar, whose Nalacharitan Atakatha is popular even today, was the most prominent poet of the 18th century among not only the Kathakali writers, but also among the classical poets of Kerala. He is often referred to as the Kalidasa of Kerala. Although Kathakali is a dance drama and its literary form should more or less be modelled after the drama, there is nothing more in common between an Atakatha and Sanskrit drama. That is to say, the principles of dramaturgy to be observed in writing a particular type of Sanskrit drama are completely ignored by an author of Atakatha. Delineation of a particular rasa is an inevitable feature with Sanskrit drama, whereas in an Atakatha all the predominant rasas are given full treatment, and consequently the theme of an Atakatha often loses its integrity and artistic unity when viewed as a literary work. Any Atakatha fulfills its objective if it affords a variety of scenes depicting different types of characters, and each scene would have its own hero with the Rasa associated with that character. When that hero is portrayed he is given utmost importance, to the utter neglect of the main sentiment Rasa of the theme in general. However, the purpose of Atakatha is not to present a theme with a well-knit emotional plot as its central point, but to present all approved types of characters already set to suit the technique of the art of Kathakali. 
The major literary output of the century was in the form of local plays composed for the art of Kathakali, the dance dramas of Kerala also known as Atakatha. It seems the Gatagavinda of Jayadeva provided a model for this type of literary composition. The verses in Sanskrit narrate the story and the dialogue is composed in imitation of songs in the Gatagavinda, set to music in appropriate ragas in the classical Karnataka style. Besides the Raja of Kotarakara and Unnai Varia referred to above, nearly a hundred plays were composed during this century by poets belonging to all categories and subscribing to all standards, such as Iriyaman Tampi and Ashvati Raja, to mention just two. Devotional literature in Malayalam found its heyday during the early phase of this period. As Huthakan referred to above gave emphasis to the Bhakti cult. The Junyanapana by Puntanam Nambudiri is a unique work in the branch of philosophical poetry. Written in simple language, it is a sincere approach to the Advaita philosophy of Vedanta. It took nearly two centuries for a salutary blending of the scholarly Sanskrit and popular styles to bring Malayalam prose to its present form, enriched in its vocabulary by Sanskrit but at the same time flexible, pliable and effective as to popular parlance. As regards literature, the leading figures were Iriyaman Thampi and Vidwan Koithampuran, both poets of the royal court. Their works abound in a beautiful and happy blending of music and poetry. The former is surely the most musical poet of Kerala and his beautiful lullaby commencing with the line Omana Thinkalkidevo has earned him an everlasting name. But the prime reason why he is held in such high esteem in Malayalam is the contribution he has made to Kathakali literature by his three works, namely the Dakshayagam, the Kachakavadam and the Uttarasvayamvaram. The latter's Kathakali work Ravana Vijayam has made him immortal in literature. <laughs> Impact of European scholars The first printed book in Kerala was Doctrina Christum, written by Henrik Enricus in lingua Malabar Tamil. It was transliterated and translated into Malayalam, and printed by the Portuguese in 1578. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Thunchadhu Ramanujan Eshuthakan was the first to substitute Grantha Malayalam script for the Tamil Vatilutu alphabet. Ez Huthakan, regarded as the father of the modern Malayalam language, undertook an elaborate translation of the ancient Indian epics Ramayana and Mahabharata into Malayalam. His Adyatma Ramayana and Mahabharata are still read with religious reverence by the Malayalam-speaking Hindu community. Kunchan Nambir, the founder of Tullal, was a prolific literary figure of the 18th century. The British printed Malabar English Dictionary by Graham Shaw in 1779 was still in the form of a Tamil English Dictionary. The Syrian Christians of Kerala started to learn the Tulu Grantha Basha of Nambudiris under the British tutelage. Paremakal Thoma Kathana wrote the first Malayalam travelogue called Varthamanapasthakam in 1789. The educational activities of the missionaries belonging to the Basel mission deserve special mention. Hermann Gundert, 1814-1893, a German missionary and scholar of exceptional linguistic talents, played a distinguishable role in the development of Malayalam literature. His major works are Keralolpathi Parinkolmala Malayalabhasha Vyakaranam Parthamala The First Malayalam School Textbook, Kerala Parama The First Malayalam Dictionary Malayalarajam Geography of Kerala, Raja Samacharam The First Malayalam Newspaper, Pashamodayam magazine. He lived in Thalassery for around 20 years. He learned the language from well-established local teachers Urucheri Garukanmar from Chokli, a village near Thalassery and consulted them in works. He also translated the Bible into Malayalam. In 1821, the Church Mission Society (CMS) at Kottayam, in association with the Syriac Orthodox Church, started a seminary at Kottayam in 1819 and started printing books in Malayalam when Benjamin Bailey, an Anglican priest, made the first Malayalam types. 
In addition, he contributed to standardizing the prose. Hermann Gundert from Stuttgart, Germany, started the first Malayalam newspaper, Raja Samakaram in 1847 at Talasari. It was printed at Basel Mission. Malayalam and Sanskrit were increasingly studied by Christians of Kottayam and Pathanamthitta. By the end of the 19th century Malayalam replaced Syriac as language of liturgy in the Syrian Christian churches. Thanks to the efforts of kings like Swathi Thirunal and to the assistance given by him to the church mission and London mission societies, a number of schools were started. Topic. 1850–1904 The establishment of the Madras University in 1857 marks an important event in the cultural history of Kerala. It is from here that a generation of scholars well versed in Western literature and with the capacity to enrich their own language by adopting Western literary trends came into being. Prose was the first branch to receive an impetus by its contact with English. Though there was no shortage of prose in Malayalam, it was not along Western lines. It was left to the far-sighted policy of the Maharaja of Travancore 1861 -1880, to start a scheme for the preparation of textbooks for use by schools in the state. Kerala Varma V, a scholar in Sanskrit, Malayalam and English was appointed chairman of the committee formed to prepare textbooks. He wrote several books suited for various standards. The growth of journalism, too, helped in the development of prose. Initiated by missionaries for the purpose of religious propaganda, journalism was taken up by local scholars who started newspapers and journals for literary and political activities. Vengail Kunhiraman Nayana, 1861-1914 from Thalassery was the author of first Malayalam short story, Vasanavakriti. After him innumerable world-class literature works by was born in Malayalam. With his work Kundalatha in 1887, Apu Nedangadi marks the origin of prose fiction in Malayalam. Other talented writers were Chandu Menon, the author of Induleka, a great social novel, in 1889 and another called Sarada. Also there was C. V. Raman Pillai, who wrote the historical novel Marthandavarma in 1890 as well as works like Dharmaraja, and Ramaraja Bahada. In poetry there were two main trends, one represented by Venmani Nampudiris Venmani poets, and the other by Kerala Varma. The latter's poetry was modelled on the old Manipravalam style abounding in Sanskrit words and terms, but it had a charm of its own when adapted to express new ideas in that masterly way characteristic of himself. His translation of Kaladasa's Abhinanasakantalam in 1882 marks an important event in the history of Malayalam drama and poetry. Also Kerala Varma's Myra Sandesam is a Sandasakavaya messenger poem written after the manner of Kaladasa's Megadutam. Though it cannot be compared with the original, it was still one of the most popularly acclaimed poems in Malayalam. One of the notable features of the early decades of the 20th century was the great interest taken by writers in translating works from Sanskrit and English into Malayalam. Kalidasa's Megadutta and Kamarasambhava by A. R. Raja Raja Varma and the Raghuvamsa by K. N. Menon must be mentioned. One of the most successful of the later translators was C. S. Subramanian Poti who set a good model by his translation of the Durjazanandini of Bankim Chandra from an English version of it. <laughs> 20th century The early decades of the 20th century saw the beginning of a period of rapid development of all branches of Malayalam literature. A good number of authors familiar with the latest trends in English literature came forward to contribute to the enrichment of their mother tongue. Their efforts were directed more to the development of prose than poetry. Topic. Prose. Several Bengali novels were translated during this period. 
CSS Potty, mentioned above, also brought out the Lake of Palms of R. C. Dutt under the title Thala Pushkarani, Kapalakandala by V. K. Thampi and Vishavruksham by T. C. Kalyani Amma were also translations of novels by Bankamochandra Chatterjee. Among the original novels written at that time only a few are worth mentioning, such as Bhutha Raya by Appan Thampuran, Keralaswaran by Raman Nambisan and Cheraman Paramal by K. K. Menon. Although a large number of social novels were produced during this period, only a few are remembered, such as Snehalatha by Karnan Menon, Hemalatha by T. K. Velu Pillai and Kambola Balika by N. K. Krishna Pillai. But by far the most inspiring work of that time was Afante Makal by M. B. Nambudiri, who directed his literary talents towards the abolition of old worn-out customs and manners which had for years been the bane of the community. Short stories came into being. With the advent of E. V. Krishna Pillai, certain marks of novelty became noticeable in the short story. His Kelisaudam proved his capacity to write with considerable emotional appeal. C. V. Raman Pillai was a pioneer in prose dramas. He had a particular knack for writing dramas in a lighter vein. His Kurupilakalari of 1909 marks the appearance of the first original Malayalam prose drama. It is a satirical drama intended to ridicule the Malayali official classes who started imitating Western fashion and etiquette. There were other authors, less well known, who wrote in this vein. Under the guidance of A. Balakrishna Pillai, a progressive school of authors appeared in almost all branches of literature, such as the novel, the short story, the drama, and criticism. Topic. Poetry Kumaran Asan's celebrated poem, Veena Puvu the fallen flower, depicts in a symbolic manner the tragedy of human life in a moving and thought-provoking manner. Valathol's Bandanasthanaya Aniruddin, which demonstrates an exceptionally brilliant power of imagination and deep emotional faculties, depicts a situation from the Puranic story of Usha and Aniruddha. Ullur S. P. Iyer was another veteran who joined the new school. He wrote a series of poems like Oru Mazathuli in which he excelled as a romantic poet. The three more or less contemporary poets Kumaran Asan, Valathol Narayana Menon, and Ullur S. Paramaswara Iyer considerably enriched Malayalam poetry. Some of their works reflect social and political movements of that time. Asan wrote about untouchability in Kerala. Ullah's writings reflect his deep devotion and admiration for the great moral and spiritual values, which he believed were the real assets of ancient social life of India. They were known as the trio of Malayalam poetry. After them, there were others like K. K. Nair and K. M. Panikar who contributed to the growth of poetry. Topic. See also. Bari Bashi Bible translations into Malayalam Malayali Arabi Malayalam Judeo Malayalam Malayalam calendar Malayalam literature Malayalam poetry Malayalam cinema Manipravalam Suriani Malayalam Tulu script Palindrome equals equals notes <laughs>